So, Dad, do you think you're gonna you think you're gonna win? I know I'm gonna win. I'm gonna retain my title year in, year out. I think about this weekend a lot. My dad had been feeling really tired at the time and mustered up the strength to go on a little road trip with me. He had back pain that resembled a kidney stone, tiredness that resembled Lyme's disease, and a bloated stomach that resembled a hernia. Ten days later, as I moved into my college apartment, dad went to the hospital with severe back pain to find out he had cancer all over his body, cancer that covered two-thirds of his liver, was all over his lungs, spine, and eventually we found out it started from the pancreas which means he had stage 4 pancreatic cancer. At 19, I dropped out of school to become his full-time caregiver. Although I wanted to make a documentary about my experience with pancreatic cancer, I struggled with finding words for it. I knew no one who was going through or had gone through a similar situation. But it wasn't until I reached out to members of the Pancreatic Cancer Action Network that I saw I wasn't alone. Dozens of people had the same plight of dealing with pancreatic cancer and its issues. Vague symptoms, misdiagnosis, insurance issues and lack of awareness, knowledge, and guidance from the medical field. I wasn't alone. These are their stories. So my dad was diagnosed when I was 11 years old. Um, I was in fifth grade and he had stage two pancreatic cancer. It was the best case scenario. They, he was eligible for the Whipple surgery. They were like, this surgery went great, everything is fabulous, but nine months later he passed away. Well, my dad went from clear scan to three months later being dead. Yeah. Um, he, it was April and he was getting back to work. He was great and then um, his port line breached. I mean, when you Google pancreatic cancer, you should just have a flashing line that says immediate death because that's what it is. It's 9% um, survival rate, which is nothing. So you said it was your dad. Um... It was my dad. Mm -hmm. He was diagnosed down there March of 2015 and he died June 15th, 2015. Okay. June 16th. Um, what happened, um, he actually in January of that year had been playing 18 holes of golf every day. He was a very, he was 81. He was very active at the time. I mean, he was cleaning his own house and, and doing his own landscaping. And every time he played golf, he'd come home really super tired. And so February, he started getting intense, intense pains in his chest, in his upper abdomen, his chest. He thought it was his heart. One morning he woke up and the pain was so intense he thought he was having a heart attack. They then, um, that afternoon, did a CAT scan. And that's when they found stage 4 pancreatic cancer and it had gone to his liver. Because I think most of the times when they start with the symptoms, nobody thinks, very few anyway, think pancreatic cancer. These are pancreatic cancer symptoms. And I think that's where awareness is so important. And, uh, he was a beautiful man. I, I really I get emotional because... I really miss him, and you know what? I hate the disease. Yeah. I, I mean, I hate with a passion this disease for stealing him from us. It rocked our family. Yeah. It really did. His, he was the rock of our family and the glue in our family, and it destroyed us. Yeah. But yeah, he used to tell us every day to put art. That's so sad. This makes me cry every time I look at it. What's but that? he would tell us to put the summer, he would tell me to put the Summer Russo stamp on the world. Then when I went to college, he actually got me like a Summer Russo stamp. It's really fucked up to be like, oh yeah, like I was so relieved when he told me it was pancreatic cancer because I was like, oh great, this is going to end soon. Mm -hmm. I can start dealing with that now. And um, yeah, that was, that was it. I, and I took it as a personal relief to know that there was no hope. I don't think that that should be the case. I think it should be like other cancers when people say, oh, I have, you know, X cancer. And they go, oh my God, great, you're going to beat this. There are some that are like that. Yeah. And I hope that eventually that's where it ends up. What we call, it's formally called complex general surgical oncology, includes essentially everything in the belly. Um, so all abdominal, you know, colorectal, colorectal liver, pancreas, um, intestines, stomach cancer. What, what has really changed, um, in pancreatic cancer is that, you know, it used to sort of be like, well, if you look like you could have a Whipple operation, you should just go to the operating room and do this big surgery. Mm -hmm. And we've slowly come to realize that, you know, like I think one of the patients that, or one of the um, folks that you interviewed, we realized that unfortunately with pancreatic cancer, many people who go through a quote unquote successful surgery still end up having 
early, you know, tumor coming back and not doing well. Again, it's not like we have any guidelines that say if you have this and this and this, you must get a CAT scan. Primary care doctors see a lot of complaints with, you know, people having lots of issues. And so yeah. it's hard for, it's easy to say in retrospect. But it's like that fine that. line. And I think that's the issue with pancreatic cancer is we haven't, we, there's no early detection really. And there's no, we, we can't figure out that fine line of catching, you know, it beforehand because so far all the survivors I've met and talked to, it's been luck. Hi. Hello. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? <laughs> Good. I had actually hurt my arm. We went out to dinner on Saturday evening, and all of a sudden my arm swelled up unexpectedly. My other arm we were concerned that I might have had a blood clot, so they ran some tests. And when they did the scan of my chest, the ER doc actually said, you should go see your GP. You have your pancreas is a little bit swollen. Um, dealing with the insurance company was quite an adventure. They actually did not want to uh, to do a scan initially because they said the radiologist hadn't seen anything. But there was something, a golf ball sized tumor on his pancreas. The mass wasn't found for eight weeks because insurance didn't want to do anything. But after advocating for his health, Alan was able to get an abdominal ultrasound and CAT scan that revealed the mass. They were able to remove it and Alan has been cancer free ever since. So with all these stories and the losses that come with them, it's hard to see the silver lining of pancreatic cancer. But there's one, and it's made by us, the survivors of the storm that pancreatic cancer creates, to tell our stories and bring awareness. But we have the fire to bring change. We go with PanCan to Washington, D.C. for Advocacy Day to speak to Congress for more government funding. We also fundraise for Purple Shrine events, where we walk and raise money for pancreatic cancer, because we know the result of lack of funding. But we need more help, more voices. My dad told us every day to put our stamp on the world and to be unstoppable. Dad, I will fulfill that promise. I will continue to be a voice for you and the 91% of people who will die from pancreatic cancer. Pancreatic cancer may have been a silent killer, but I can say for certain, I will not stay silent. <laughs>